Hello everyone and welcome to Explore New England. What you're about to hear and see are real stories of paranormal activity from the case files of DLH Paranormal. Today we're going to delve into the mind of a paranormal investigator, Deb Vickers of DLH Paranormal. DLH Paranormal is one of the top paranormal teams in the New England area and today she will take us through one of her most haunting cases as well as allow us to listen to some exclusive EVPs from other investigations. I'm Deb from DLH Paranormal. A DLH Paranormal consists of myself, my daughter Heather, and my daughter Laura, hence the name DLH. So we're kind of an unusual team. We have our friend Cindy, who is a witch, so she helps us out a lot. Um, a lot of the negative things. We also have our friend Vanessa, who is a shaman. So we have all kind of different aspects on our team. Um, and it's kind of nice to have my daughters and we work together as a family. Um, my daughter's boyfriend, Vinny, has actually been joining our team on quite a few of our investigations. And it's absolutely amazing. Um, Heather and Vinny have formed Explore New England, which goes along perfectly with DLH Paranormal because New England is such an old community. I mean, it's just fascinating the history that we have, and we have so much paranormal. So it's kind of cool to team up with Explore New England and kind of go along with the paranormal theme. So. So the girls and I have done many cases over the years. I've lost track of how many, but there's one in particular that really stuck in my mind. Um, it was very emotional for me. We had a young couple whose house had burned down and their three dogs perished in the fire. We had recently done an article in a local newspaper, and after their house had burned down, they had had a lot of, a lot of, a lot of paranormal activity previously to this happening felt as though this is what had caused it. So they found our newspaper and the newspaper just kept showing up and showing up and, and she saw us and she said, I, I just felt drawn. I had to call these ladies in to help us because they had moved um, to his mom's house and they were still having activity. So whatever was there had followed them. So it was almost like fate that we were, we were meant to go and, and, and help these people. So they called us in, and I remember the first day we went, I had met them in person, I had spoken with them on the phone quite a lot, and we showed up, and they were in the driveway with her dad coming through their stuff, and, and I just, I got out of the truck, and I was so sad, I was trying to hold the tears back, and I didn't know what to do, I just went, I just hugged them, it was just so emotional, I mean, the little dogs were like their family, and they perished in the fire. But previously they had had a lot of paranormal activity. They were afraid to go to the bathroom themselves at night. It was that bad. Um, the dog would stand and bark in the bathroom at the old shower that had been blocked off. They would smell cigarette smoke. And, and they didn't smoke. They would go outside and look and there was no one outside smoking. So they had a lot of different things that were going on. Her mom had passed away. The pictures of her mom would be pushed flat down on the table and thrown on the floor. They were just so, it was very negative. Whatever was there was very negative. So she got to the point where she was afraid to sleep in the house alone. And he left for work in the morning and she had to work that night. So she went to sleep with her dad. If she hadn't gone to sleep with her dad, she would have been in fire. So the house burned. I mean, you could still walk through it. It was all, it was a lot of rubble. It was all flat. I mean, you'd go in there, you'd come out, you'd smell like smoke for hours after just spending a little bit of time in there. But she, um, whatever it was seemed to um, target her more than anything else. So anyway, we planned our investigation because they moved to his mom's house and they still had activity, so whatever it was had followed them. But we planned our investigation for the evening because um, he felt as though that's when the most activity occurred. 
I was not looking forward to that. I was, I just, this one creeps me out more than anything else. But on our daytime walk, before we planned our evening investigation, we did a walk through with them and, and her dad. And there was one room in particular in the house, and he would go in and he would come out and he'd be crying. He, he would just feel so sad. So when we went to all, when we went to approach that room, I lost my equilibrium. I, I just actually tipped sideways. And when we got inside, it was even worse. I actually, that was the first time I ever felt like I was going to have to leave a room and leave an investigation. I, my head was spinning. I felt sick. I never had anything affect me that negatively before. And her dad was actually holding on to Laura because he was feeling it. Um, so we went back and, and, you know, a couple nights later, we, we did our investigation. Like I said, I was not, I was not looking forward to that. I really wasn't. I just was really creeped out by this one. But to make a long story short, um, we had done some EVP and we caught an EVP that said heat up. Um, whatever it was, was interacting with us throughout the whole time through EVP. Now the fire marshal, who was a close friend of the family, had come in and done his investigation. He could not figure out what had started this fire. Well, I feel like with everything that, that I got, I feel as though it was this negative entity that had um, started the fire. He had talked about, um, you know, heat up, that he did not like her. He had also talked about how there had been, it had been a drug house. Three people had died here. So. Whoever this negative entity was, I feel as though he caused the fire. Um, there were a lot of other little, there were just so many other little details in between, and it was kind of hard to, to talk about it all because there were so many things that had happened. But all in all, that's what I came up with, was the fact that this entity had started the fire. Um, so it was pretty, that was one of our, our, our most intense um, I wish I had time to go more into detail. In 2014, a woman contacted DLH Paranormal. She claimed the spirit of a young man was haunting her home daily. She would see his spirit all over her house, sometimes with his black cat, and he even touched the woman on some occasions. What you're about to see is a photo of the spirit captured in a mirror reflection in the basement of the house by DLH during the investigation. What you are about to hear is an actual EVP recorded by DLH Paranormal during an investigation at a historical cemetery in Massachusetts. Deb was drawn to this one headstone in particular of a young boy named Jonathan, who died in his 12th year. Next to him was the tombstone of a 12-year-old girl named Rebecca. On Rebecca's tombstone, it stated she was the wife of Jonathan. Surprised by their age, Deb asked, How old were you, Jonathan, when you married your wife? Upon playback of the recording, Deb heard this Class A EVP. Of Jonathan. We were both 12. That is weird. Of Jonathan. We were both 12. That is weird. Of Jonathan. We were both 12. That is weird. Of Jonathan. We were both 12. That is weird. them your all and try to help them and you need to be 
professional. We have clients we've been working with for years to try and resolve their issues. We're always available to them. We always want to help them. And we're always respectful of the students, no matter where we go, because sometimes we'll just go to places where, um, just for fun, you know, just to, to enjoy ourselves. But always be respectful because you know, the spirits are people. And also be really careful to protect yourselves. Like I bring down my white light on myself and on my team as well. I use Archangel Michael. Cindy uses her dragon's blood. Um, she also puts a shield around herself. So whatever you are, do your prayers beforehand. Whatever your higher power is, always bring down that protection. Always protect yourself. You know, Heather and I went to what we thought was a simple investigation and Heather got a horrible attachment. So, you know, just be careful because it can happen. Um, just in life, there's negative people that have passed the same as in life. You have your good people and you have your bad people. And it's the same way in death. So, I, I would say just always, always, you know, protect yourself and always be respectful of your clients and